I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, I want to talk about three things. Outgrowing, doing what makes you happy, and making the hard choices. I want to talk about those three things because in my life and in my experience, not only with myself, but with my clients and with people around me, those are the three things that lead to the most growth and advancement. Being able to actually identify those things and act on them is what can lead to the most advancement, what does lead to the most advancement. So number one, outgrowing. I recently had this experience where I was doing something that I do in the regular course of my work, the many things that I do, and I felt very comfortable, very comfortable doing the kind of work that I had been doing, that I was doing in that moment. And I realized that I was uncomfortable with how comfortable I was. And I want to talk about that for a second, because being so comfortable was uncomfortable to me. And to me, that meant that I was ready to grow in a certain way that pertained to that work that I was doing. I think that this is a really important feeling to reflect upon. Maybe you've experienced it when you went back to an old school that you went to, or when you returned to an old job that you had that maybe you took a break from and then you went back. And that feeling of just being so comfortable that you're uncomfortable is something that I want you to listen to. Because this is life telling you it's time to grow. This place, this work has served you. And now it's time to move on, to grow, to build upon that. Doesn't mean that we forget about it and that our experience no longer matters. No, absolutely not. It means that we're ready to build on that experience. So that's the first thing. The second thing, doing what makes you happy. And the reason that I want to talk about doing what makes you happy is because if we're doing something that we hate as students, as professionals, in our personal lives, in our professional lives, if we're doing something that we don't like, something that isn't aligned with our values, it's going to be a lot harder to spend all that time and all that effort and all that money, if you're paying tuition, for example, to finish the program or to go for that promotion or whatever the case may be. Now, when I'm saying do what makes you happy, I don't mean that you're like skipping through the streets. What I mean is that you actually feel growth. You actually feel that you're thriving. You actually feel a sense of that there's room to grow, that there's hope for growth, that you're not placed in a box, that you're not faced with this glass ceiling, that your growth is not taken for granted by those around you, and that you also don't take for granted your own growth and what you need in order to be able to grow. And sometimes that is to move on. For example, if you've outgrown a position or something it is that you're doing, or for example, people that you're hanging out with, we outgrow people all the time. And sticking around people who are not growing or who are not supportive of our growth holds us back. So this concept of outgrowing and doing what it is that makes you happy also applies to people that you allow into your life, that you allow the privilege to be in your life, to take up your time and your energy, right? I've said 
before that if you don't have a grasp on and control your time and your energy, somebody else will. You're keeping people around that are holding you back that you are in the process of or have outgrown. Then that's something you might want to reflect on a little bit in order to determine how it is that that's affecting you and your life and your trajectory. Now, doing what makes you happy doesn't necessarily mean, as I said, that, you know, that you're skipping through the streets. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that you're at a 10 out of 10 every single day. As I said, what it means is that you are content. You have hope. You have faith in what it is that you're doing. You believe in what it is that you're doing. You believe that there's a reason that you're doing what you're doing. Whether it's a program, whether it's a job, whether it's an application, whether you're thinking of applying to law school or medical school or a master's program or a PhD program or any equivalent program, you want to do it because you want to do it. I want to give you an example from my life where people who weren't happy doing what they were doing, and I think were happy probably being unhappy in what they were doing, try to influence me and what I wanted to do. So as I was finishing my PhD, about a year before I finished my PhD, I was admitted to law school. And because I wasn't quite done my PhD just yet, I ended up deferring my start date at law school for a year. So if you're in, for example, Mastering Academic Applications, we have had this conversation where I've been very open that I am a very private person with things that matter to me, with my goals, with my trajectory while I'm still working it out. So for example, when I was applying to my the programs that I had applied to, whether it was my master's or the PhD or way back when I, I applied to med school or later when I applied to law school, I didn't make public that I was ever applying to these programs. No one around me knew that I was applying to these programs, not even my friends. And that was for many reasons. One of those reasons was because I didn't want their feelings about what they think that I should be doing or whatever. I didn't want their feelings to influence what it is that I thought that I wanted to do. Not that, not that any of them would be unsupportive, but I, I just didn't want my energy to be taken up by worrying. So it was much more about me than it was about them. And so when I applied and then got in, that's when I told people that, you know, I'd applied, I'd gotten in and now I'm deciding, you know, should I defer? What should I really didn't have much of a choice because I wasn't on my PhD, but you know, it's always a conversation. Or if it was, you know, that I got in somewhere that was out of town for me, it was, you know, if I got in somewhere that was out of Toronto, which I did, then the question was, you know, should I go? You know, what's, what's the, you know, what, what's the plan? What should I do? What did they do? And a lot of my friends went to various schools that were outside of Ontario. And so I would ask them, you know, what their experience was and what about coming back and, and how that worked for them. But I didn't have these conversations until it was time. And for me, that meant until I was ready to have the conversation, not until they were ready to have the conversation because You have to live your life and make your choices on your own terms. Another reason that I didn't make public what I was doing, where I was applying, this is actually more salient than the last point, is that when you talk about what it is that you are planning on doing, you get reactions from other people. So for example, oh my gosh, you're applying to med school. That's so great. Oh, you're applying to law school. That's so great. Oh, you're applying to this or that. Oh, that's so great. And all of a sudden, this really hyper stressful, intense situation that you're struggling with and mulling over in your mind, the the relief that you get from getting that reaction from somebody else means internally that you feel a sense of relief. And for me, that sense of relief lets you off the hook of doing that hard work of the applications of the standardized test because you feel like you've already gotten the response that you may have wanted from applying, for example. So I have current clients that I have this conversation with and they tell me, oh, I'm telling all these people, I'm telling my friends, they're all so impressed. And then on the other side of things, they're saying, I can't sit down to work, it's so hard you know, and I feel so much pressure. They're all so excited for me, but I can't sit down to work. And one of the suggestions that I have is stop talking about it and start doing. 
And that's actually been really helpful for them. And it was helpful for me to stop talking about it and start doing. The other reason I'm talking about this is because once I got in, and then I was really happy that I was able to make the decision to apply independently from other people. Because when I told other people, some friends, some acquaintances that I had gotten in, some of their reactions, for example, when I was applying to law school, some lawyers that I knew already reacted, oh, why would you do that? Or, oh, like, why would you ever want to be a lawyer? Or you already have a PhD, why would you want to go to law school? Imposing their beliefs about professional development and advancement onto me. And also imposing their displeasure potentially with their choices onto me. And I was able to disconnect the two because I was older. I had or almost had a PhD at the time. So I'd I'd been through a lot of personal development and growth by then. Grad school really kicks your butt in terms of personal and professional development. So when my some of my lawyer friends, of course, not all, some of them would say things like that to me, they would always, you know, I I would pry a little bit or prod a little bit. And I would say, you know, why do you feel that way? Like, you're a lawyer, right? Like, I was confused because they were telling me not to do the very thing that they were doing and making a living from. Truthfully, I was very confused about this because how can somebody who's doing it tell you not to do it if you haven't done it yet? Even somebody who hasn't done it or who may have not succeeded in the way that they wanted to, how can they turn around and tell you what life choices to make? So I was really confused about this. And so I would ask, I would say, well, listen, don't you like what you're doing? And they would say, oh, you know, no, the day to day, it's not what I thought it was. That's an answer that I get from a lot of current lawyers who wanted to be lawyers before they knew what lawyers were. I didn't know what it was. I didn't understand what the day to day was. I didn't understand. I didn't understand what the work was or I thought I knew what it was. And now I just hate it. And I've heard the same thing from doctors, the same thing from people in any field. You'll find people who love it and people who hate it. People in every field who both love and hate what it is that they've chosen to do, whether it's grad school or professional school, you'll get different opinions depending on who you talk to. And that's natural and that's normal and that's great. We want those diverse opinions. So the question that I followed up with was, okay, well, then why did you go to law school? Or why did you go to med school? Or why did you do a master's? Or why did you do a PhD? Or why did you do an MBA? Or why did you get this certification or that certification if you don't like it? And they said, oh, my parents wanted me to. Oh, my oh my mom thought I should do this. Oh, my dad thought I should do that. Oh, my sister told me to, or my brother, or my relative, or my uncle, or whoever it was, they told me I should do this. Or or a lawyer told me I'd be a real good lawyer, so I went to law school. And for every single, I'm not kidding, for every single one of those people who told me, oh, you shouldn't do that, and told me that they were unhappy doing what it is that they were doing, every single one of those people did all of that work, spent all of that energy, spent all of that money in order to please somebody else. Every single one. I'm not kidding. A hundred percent. And I asked the questions. You know, I asked the questions. I asked the questions because when somebody tells me not to do something, I'm going to ask why. And then I'm going to ask what their own experience is. And I have done that. And in 100% of those cases, every single case, they, every single one of them said that somebody else wanted them to do it. And they basically obliged. So. When I say do what makes you happy, it also means think about what is in alignment with you and what you want and how you're going to be spending your time and spending your days. And as you know, the applications that I work on with my clients are just the tip of the iceberg. I always say it's not just about the applications. It's not even just about getting in, though it it's a lot about that, but it's not just about that. It's also about the kind of life you want, the kind of freedom you want, the kind of opportunity you want, the kind of choice that you want, right? Time freedom, money freedom, opportunity to choose, opportunity to grow. And sometimes what that means is that you have to make 
the hard choice. And that's the third point, that oftentimes it's way easier to make a decision for external validation. We've talked about internal and external validation before. The easy way is to do things that other people will be happy about because you won't face the backlash, you won't face questions, you'll be obliging, it'll be the easy way. But will that be the way that you can live with? And in 20 years or 40 years or 50 years, do you really want to look back and think, I should have made a different decision? And we'll talk about regret in another episode. That topic is way too big for for talking about today. But the hard choice is often one that is hard because we might be afraid of what someone else around us who we care about and whose opinion we care about will think. Who were telling me, oh, you shouldn't go to law school. Oh, being a lawyer is whatever it is to them. Their opinions ended up mattering a lot less to me or not at all because I was able to identify my reasons and the fact that I was doing it because it was something that I genuinely wanted to do. And let me tell you something, I don't regret it at all. As much as I critique my law school experience and I shine light on the really challenging things about law school, both socially and academically and institutionally, I also really enjoyed my time there for many reasons. And I also absolutely loved my time in grad school and I wouldn't change anything. I also love my firm and I love running my firm. And we're actually, my firm is growing and Apply Yourself is growing. And the reason that I've been able to engage in the education that I've wanted to, that I've been able to found and run two companies to the point that they're growing is because I love everything that I'm doing. And so if somebody were to ask me, do you think I should be a lawyer? I wouldn't, I I actually honestly wouldn't say yes or no. If somebody asked me, should I apply to med school? I wouldn't say yes or no. If somebody asked me, should I apply to grad school? I wouldn't say yes or no. I would have a really genuine conversation with them about what they want, what they want their life to look like. And this is what I do with my clients. My clients will come to me and they'll say, okay, so I'm applying to medical school. My answer is okay. Then they say, should I also apply to this program or that program? And my answer is never yes or no. It's what do you want? And if the answer is, well, my mom thinks this, my dad thinks this, then, okay, we let it all out. And then we come back to number one, to you. What do you want? Because they get to go to sleep at night with their decisions. And you get to go to sleep at night for the rest of your life with yours. So are you going to make the easy decision of pleasing somebody else, no matter who it is? Or are you going to make that harder decision of doing what it is that you want to do, applying to that program that you want to apply to, switching fields if that's what you want, because you want to. Because you've put in the time, energy, the thought, maybe the money, depending on the situation. And here's the other thing. No time is ever wasted. This is the other piece of it. Is that if you do decide against something else, and if you do switch, change course from what somebody else expected of you, none of that is wasted time. Because you developed skills no matter what you did. Whether you were working a part-time job or whether you were working a full-time job and decide to go back to school, whether you have done several academic programs and decided halfway through that you wanted to switch out of one and into another or whatever your path is, none of it is a waste of time. None of it is a waste of time because you're developing skills, you're developing personally, you're developing professionally, you're developing reflection, you're developing critical thought about yourself and what you're doing and how you want to live your life. You're coming across new people who may have an impact on you and what you're and what you decide to do. They may inspire you. They may they may teach you a lesson about, well, this is not the kind of person that I want in my life. And that is not wasted time. That is not wasted time. So I want you to remember this as you are continuing to make decisions about your life. Only you can make them. And if you feel in alignment with the decisions that you're making, you will grow and you will thrive and you will make decisions from a place of abundance. 
and growth and opportunity and freedom, not from a place of competition and scarcity. Your frame of mind will be completely different when you are making decisions from a place of this is what's right for me, not necessarily or not, period, not what is right for somebody else. So number one, pay attention to when you feel like you've outgrown something, when you feel too comfortable somewhere and you feel that you're growing out of that space. Number two, do what makes you happy. Again, that doesn't mean skipping in the street. For me, happy means that you have genuinely, you have hope, you have opportunity to grow, you feel inspired. You don't feel like you're in a box. You don't feel weighed down by all these pressures externally. You feel like you are where you're meant to be. There will be hard days, no matter what you're doing. Even if you love it, there will be hard days. There will be days that feel like a slog. There may even even be weeks that feel like a slog and that's okay. But doing what makes you feel inspired, like there is no box because there is no box. There is no box. And any box that you're perceiving is constructed and you can get rid of it by thinking a different way. And by making the hard choices, you are guaranteeing yourself advancement. You are guaranteeing yourself growth. You are guaranteeing yourself a life beyond your wildest dreams, even if you don't know what that looks like yet. By doing these three things, by being mindful and reflecting on these three things regularly, You are guaranteeing yourself a life full of choice, a life full of opportunity, a life full of freedom. Thank you so much for joining me here today and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.